Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I got quite a root or quite a few requests from my subscribers to do a basic tutorial on aerosol art and just talk about the very basics, just how to get started, things that you're generally going to need to know, and just for anyone who kind of wants to start using aerosol as a art medium. Okay. Uh, there's a couple different things that I want to go through in this video. I'm going to try and do a couple different parts to this, but first of all, let's talk about safety. Safety first, right? This is a respirator. Um, there is a difference between a respirator and a particle mask. This is a respirator. If you're going to be using aerosol on a regular basis, you're going to need this. People will argue with you over, oh, you don't need that, it's overkill. The reality is, if you're going to be using aerosol every day like I do, you're gonna need this. If you're just painting outside every once in a while then it probably is overkill. You probably really don't need it but if you're gonna be painting inside at all or on a regular basis you really do need one. They're not that expensive. This one I think was probably about forty five dollars somewhere there I think. I mean it's a little bit of an investment and like these canisters come off they're replaceable. You need to change them every once in a while they're about ten dollars. But the difference is because the reason this is a respirator and not a particle mask is because a particle mask they sometimes even look like this and uh... but it'll say on the package that particle mask only filters out just that particles when you use aerosol there's the actual particles of paint that are going to be in the air but then there's aerosol vapor too and a like a respirator will filter out particles and vapor. That's what this one does. Because if you're going to be painting inside and you're just wearing a particle mask, you might as well not be wearing anything because you're still breathing in all the vapors. It's not filtering out any of that. And the vapors, it's what's going to do the long-term damage, the things that you're trying to prevent. So make sure that you get a respirator and not a particle mask because you want you don't want to be breathing in that aerosol. Secondly, latex gloves. These aren't as important, but they're a good idea to have because if you have paint like on the end of your fingers all the time every day for, you know, several years of your life, you're going to develop like skin problems. Eventually, you'll develop a mild uh, allergy to the paint and you'll start breaking out and you just don't really want to have to deal with that. So, latex gloves are also a good idea. Um, protect your eyes, try not to spray above you, things like that, because if the paint gets in your eyes, it trust me, it's painful. That's about it as far as the actual safety of using aerosol paint. If you're going to paint inside, try and do it in a ventilated area. You want to open up windows, point a fan out the window or something like that to get more of those vapors outside. And just be careful of overspray. If you're going to paint inside, pretty much anything in the room is going to get overspray on it. Also, Let's talk about caps. With aerosol paint, caps are a big deal. Depending on what you're using them for, they're all going to come with a stock cap which looks a little bit like this, except for the new Krylon cans have actually changed over to this cap, which is horrible. I wish they never would have done that because these, the graffiti, calligraphy caps and things that are going to help you paint, won't work on the new Krylon cans because they've changed them too much. Normally, you would have a top like this, which you can change any of these different caps to. And you can read online about them because there's a lot to know about caps. My two favorites are these two. This is the German Outline Cap. Uh, I use it for Rust-Oleum, uh, old Krylon cans, things like that. It won't fit all of your different graffiti pants. Some of the other imports, it won't fit. You just kind of have to do the research on it. This is a New York Fat Cap. It's also one of my favorites. I'll take you downstairs later and show you the difference between these two caps and a stock cap. Um, I just completely repainted my room because I'm moving, so I'm not going to spray the walls in here again. I'll have to paint. So I'm actually going to take you downstairs real quick so that I can show you the difference between these caps. I have so many of these. They're actually really cheap. You can go online and buy a couple of dozen of them for like a dollar or something like that. And so I'll show you the difference between all the caps and also just the way you hold the can makes a big difference. Alright? Okay guys, um, we're in the basement. I'm breaking my own rule. I'm not wearing my uh, respirator, but that's because obviously I'm talking to you guys. If I was wearing it, you wouldn't be able to hear me. So forgive me just this one time. Um, 
I wanted to show you real quick the difference, like I said, between the caps and how you hold the can. First of all, the difference is between the caps. Um, this is the stock cap. It's the cap that comes with all the cans of paint that you buy, obviously, except Krylon, which, you know, like I said, is different. You know, I'm not as big of a fan of Krylon as I was now because of that, but anyway, if you buy Rust-Oleum or Color Place or just other different, you know, just Walmart cans or things like that, or most of the things that you buy off the internet, this is the sort of cap that they're going to come with. Um, notice it just kind of throws the paint out there. It'll give you an okay line, and it's alright for blending if you want, but it's it's not going to give you any real control over the paint. It's it's like it's decent for blending. Blending is all right, but like if you're doing any kind of certain detail work or things like that, this isn't the type of cap that I would recommend that you use. If you want sort of a fatter type of a line, or if you're blending something or filling a large area in or something like that, um, this is the New York Fat Cap, which is my favorite for any of those things. Obviously, you can see that line is way bigger. It's, uh, it gives you more control over the paint. You can see like along the top and the bottom here, you don't have as much uh, just like overspray as you do here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like a, there's the actual line, but then there's like a line of overspray that goes with it. When you use a cap like this, you're not going to get that. And you can fill large areas with that because it's a lot bigger. And if you want a smaller line, if you're doing detail work or something like that, this is the German outline cap, which is my favorite for things like that. You can see it's a lot smaller than that other one. Not a lot smaller, but that's going to depend on how close you are to. I can't tell really how much of this you guys are going to be able to see, but you should get the basic idea. You can also change the thickness of your line simply by how close you are to the board. Most of the time when I'm working on a painting, I'll be about a can's width away from the canvas, approximately, depending on what I'm trying to do. If I want just like a real nice decent line, like I said, about a can's width away is where you want to be. You can move further back than that, and your paint won't run as much, but you're going to get a lot fainter of a line. It's better if you're trying to blend something. You can also just change the angle that you're holding the can. You can get a sharp line on the bottom and then like fade it up towards the top if you're trying to blend something by just holding the can at an angle. And you can fade it up more like that. You know, you really just kind of got to experiment with it. As you can see now, I got closer to the board so it's running. You just kind of got to play with it. Can control is one of those things that you need to get your hands on a can of paint and find a board or a wall or something that you can work on or a canvas and just, just practice as much as you can. Just hold on to the can and just see what you can do with it. Alright, I'm going to take you guys back upstairs now and just talk a little bit more and then I'll probably end this video. Okay guys, like I said, um, the biggest thing with aerosol paint is really just practice. Um, go out to Walmart and get like these color place cans at Walmart are like a dollar or something like that for black and white and colors are like just over a dollar and uh, just spend like ten dollars or something like that and get some paint and just practice you really need to get your hands on some cans of paint and just you know just go outside and practice for a few hours a day um, next time I'm gonna talk about timing timing is a big issue with aerosol paint because it dries so fast um, you need to know when to add more paint when not to add more paint when to scrape paint away and I'll show you some of the effects that you can get just by knowing when and when to do what. Alright, so go out and get some paint and practice. Uh, until next time, alright? Peace, guys. My breath fogged up the glass And so I drew a new face and I laughed